Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Guys, I'm glad to be here today again. It's, uh, wow, 6 o'clock here, 6.08 in Colorado. And I have to get this done because I've been such having a busy day. Uh, but I really got to get this video out to you guys today because there's so much going on. And I want to share some material today. So I'm going to be going through Israel updates. Uh, I think I'm going to have Monte Judah talk about the, his Israel channel, what's going on. Dave Hodges got something to say. Uh, you know, we got the 4th of July coming, so a lot of people packing in the airport. So he's talking about the airport, so Dave Hodges. And also, uh, we're going to get into uh, Ken Raggio special video that I must repeat on my channel and show you guys. I'm going to try to show at least 25 minutes of it, 20 minutes of it, because it's really power-packed with information you need to know right now. Uh, and also world news report today world news report today have two videos uh, on what's going on with the quakes and things going on so uh, I'm just here to show you guys some news as always uh, and then we're going to get into Psalms 20 I'm just going to do Psalms 26 today uh, a, a powerful short uh, psalm but very powerful uh, I was reading it last night when I did my uh, prayer for the night and so, uh, and then also we're going to end the video with Maranatha, uh, shaping up with God's workshop and also missions report, missions report from, uh, I think it's from Pakistan actually today. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to do that. And then now I'm going to get on into a song I want to play from Mia, what he, uh, everything on the screen, everything on the screen. Okay. It's just a wonderful song. I love it so much. So we're going to play everything because he is our everything. He should be a everything in your life. If he isn't a everything in your life, he should be a everything in your life. Yeshua Messiah. Hiya. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and play that and start this video out right now, uh, on a Friday evening, uh, into going into Sabbath here soon. So, uh, let me go ahead and play this song right now and mute out. I hope you guys keep them warm because it's a hot day. It was 97 degrees yesterday. I was out in the heat. I stayed inside today, but I had a lot of things to catch up and do. So uh, I hope you guys enjoying your weekend coming uh, uh, and really prepare yourself to know what's ahead because a lot of things are going on. So let me go ahead and uh, get this muted out.
Hello, everyone. I'm Monty Judah with Lion and Lamb Ministries. This is another edition of Messianic World Update. Today's date is July 1 of the year 2022. We are halfway through the year, and it's been a very exciting year. I can only imagine how much more exciting it will be for the rest of it. Let's talk about what's going on in Israel at the moment. Uh, the Knesset under the Bennett government has finally collapsed. The Knesset has dissolved. Elections are now set for November 1. 
And f the previous foreign minister, Lapid, is now the new prime minister of the interim government. And he's also retaining his portfolio as the foreign minister. So Lapid is now the prime minister and the foreign minister for Israel during this period of time. The truth of the matter is that the Department of Defense and the State Department have negotiated with the Arab Accord nations and with Israel uh, for a strategic defense agreement uh, to deal with the Iranian threat. And he's going there to sign the deal uh, for that. Uh, this has been in the works for a while, um, and uh, uh, due to efforts of the State Department and uh, the American DOD uh, to be able to pull this off. Israel, of course, welcomes that. Israel needs all the help they can get to maintain defense and deal with the Earth Iranian threat problem. So let's talk about Iran now. And what I'm about to tell you is I can't believe I'm going to say it to you. Uh, the European Union and the United States of America, not the JCPOA, just those two entities, have decided to renegotiate with Iran for a nuclear agreement. And as a result, uh, they are hinting at sanctions relief to get the Iranians to come back. And the, uh, it's not going to be the original agreement. They're, they're, they're talking about some other kind of agreement trying to structure. And of course, Iran is jumped on this and said, oh, they're ready to negotiate because they have played this game very well and they are, would love to have sanctions relief and get more money uh, back into their coffers to do the things they want to do and play the Western powers along. Now, here is the part that's particularly disturbing about this. The IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, military intelligence elements have agreed to this and are promoting that there be negotiations with Iran. Now, the IDF or the um, Israeli intelligence community is resisting and saying, no, we shouldn't be doing this. So there is a split within Israel of two major, major defense elements of the nation. One is for the negotiations with Iran, one is against them. In the meantime, um, Iran is relishing at this moment that this obviously means that Israel is not going to be coming and attacking. Uh, they don't have to worry about that. Uh, they can play all the nations along. They can extend out their timeline to do more things they'd like to do, including enriching more uranium, building uh, the weapon they need to do, and being able to get it onto an ICBM. There is no question uh, on the part of any of the analysts that uh, Iran is moving toward getting a nuclear weapon. And essentially what is happening is the Iranian nuke threat is, is, is climbing. It's increasing. Even the threat that they are going to be getting one is starting to have an impact. We've always believed that Iran wanted to get a nuclear weapon because it, it strengthens their negotiation position and the ability to intimidate other nations. And so even now, they're beginning to throw their weight around in, in that regard. But it causes us to have to beg the following question. With the military intelligence group in Israel, the IDF, being in favor of negotiations, it doesn't sound like they're very confident about their plan B military option of being able to hit Iran, which begs the question, can Israel effectively carry out a military strike that would take out the nuclear program for Iran? There's always been a question about it, but in recent days with the drills and with the other cooperation with the IAEA backing away from Iran um, and, and everybody recognizing this is what Iran has really got to do, we got to stop them, uh, it begs the question, can Israel pull this off? And it may be that they can't. It may be that Iran is inevitable to get a nuclear weapon and they're just going to have to play for a different set of circumstances on how to uh, deal with it. 
Um, having mentioned the fact that Ir Iran is moving toward a nuclear weapon, we, if you step back with and look at the rest of the world, uh, the nuclear threat uh, to the whole world is also increasing dramatically. Case in point, since Joe Biden has come into office as president, he's basically stopped, and I mentioned this to you before, he stopped the process of going forward with advanced nuclear weapon arsenal. He has stopped maintaining the arsenal that we have. Uh, the United States is now uh, not the leading nuclear nation in the world. We're, we're somewhere around second or third in the world. Russia and China are definitely climbing in that world. All of this is causing the nuclear threat to increase for the entire world. Um, let me throw out one particular scenario here about when I'm talking about nuclear threat and nuclear weapons. Um, there is a, a use of a nuclear weapon which is called HEMP, High Altitude Electromagnetic Pulse. And they can come up with what they call a super EMP, a super EMP device. You put one of these, you shoot one of these um, into space, and it flies over the continental United States, and this thing goes off not on the ground, but it goes off high altitude. Line of sight down, the footprint it puts down onto the Earth, it sends an electromagnetic pulse out, and it fries essentially everything electronic. One of these devices uh, over uh, the United States would literally black this nation out for a year. Uh, and only certain elements that have been protected and shielded in the military would be able to operate and maintain. It would basically destroy the United States of America with one device, and the device didn't actually hit a city. Uh, North Korea is working on this as hard as they possibly can. And by the way, China knows about it and Russia knows about it. And so when I talk about this nuclear threat, uh, every one of those nations promote and talk about their nuclear weapons and the use of them. In fact, they make parades. They actually parade their nuclear weapons down and their, all their people cheer and they talk with great bravado about how they can all wipe out the United States. I'm not making this up. That's, that's, that's what they do. Now, here in the United States, it's the exact opposite. We have the idea that it is intolerable to use a nuclear weapon and it's intolerable to even have them. And by the way, those are the people in the Biden administration. So they don't want to have that defensive posture. They don't want to have that in the arsenal to be able to fend off those different things. I'll show you how this has already had an impact. You remember the Russia-Ukraine war? The United States could have stepped in very clearly and helped Ukraine, but we couldn't send troops in because we thought it would escalate and, and Russia was hinting at about using nuclear weapons. And we don't want them to go off anywhere. And that's our policy here in the United States. So we bend, we yield, and we give ground. And uh, it's making our world more dangerous. Now, the reason I... Uh, I think that's significant for us to pay attention to. Not only uh, do we have um, a sealed judgment early in the Great Tribulation, which it says peace has taken the earth, there's war, and it's a time of distress that the world has never seen before, I think there's a very good possibility that that war will have nuclear weapons going off. That, that That's what that prophecy entails. Because what follows from that war is a whole lot of people Billions of people die. Now, to accomplish those kinds of numbers, you have to have this kind of global thermonuclear kind of exchange thing. And I don't think that the, the people in this country and the Western nations quite understand. One nuclear weapon on any city in the United States has the potential to potentially take the entire country down the chaos that would follow. 
the number of citizens that would be upset with the government allowing that to take place and all that is involved with it would be a very, very frightening scenario. We are living in a world today, and we have all these prophecies from God describing what's supposed to happen at the end of the ages. They're all saying the same thing. So that's our world this week, and I trust that you will have a peaceful Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, I'm Jonathan Hassan, the Editor-in-Chief of TV7 Israel, and I would like to personally invite you to join us for our bi-weekly Jerusalem Studio programs for a better in-depth understanding of Israel and its region. News report today. Today is June 30th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, we have a huge swarm of earthquakes blasting California right now. We will go over that in tonight's live. But in the meantime, we've just had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake hit the Philippines. Now, this is where we have... Plate boundaries that are not connected as of yet. We also are on a volcanic ridge here. We have several volcanoes that have been erupting on and off for the last month or two. The USGS is reporting this earthquake at the depth of 35.4 kilometers. We're going to get some information from all the reporting agencies around the globe right now. All right, over to volcanosandearthquakes.com. Uh, Bulasan volcano in the Philippines has recently erupted. We have two additional volcanoes awakening there. Their uh, last few eruptions were significant. Had a friend doing an LNG, liquefied natural gas project there, who decided to quit and come back to Texas after the last couple of eruptions. So it must be rocking the island. Uh, let's see what the other reporting agencies had to say. The French came in as 6-0, Raspberry Shake 6-0, the Europeans a 5-9, the Germans a 5-9, Australia a 6-0, uh, Italy a 6-0, and the Philippines a 6-0. Now over to VolcanoDiscovery.com, we see that it was a strong magnitude 6.0. Hit the South China Sea, 84 kilometers northwest of Aparai, the Philippines, on Friday, July 1st, which it already is there. Let's see what we have here. See how strong she was. Magnitude 6. But how strong was it? Not even one atomic bomb's worth of energy was released. Almost, but not quite. And we will... Make sure real quick that all the reporting agencies have kept the same information going. Looks like uh, they're definitely all in agreement. It's either a 6.0 or a 5.9 coming out of Europe and coming out of Germany. Who can believe that France has it as a 6.0? I thought they already surrendered. God bless you and yours. Please share. Please Subscribe and always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World. James Kaufman, World News Report today. Today is June 30th, 2022, 3 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Oops. A Navy helicopter rigging failure sends five missiles into the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. 
five Navy RIM 116 rolling airframe missiles rams have found a new home in the briny depths of the Pacific Ocean after a helicopter dropped them into the water during a vertical replenishment June 17th, officials have confirmed. The MH-60S Nighthawk helicopter assigned to the Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 21 was carrying two containers full of missiles en route to the amphibious assault ship Essex when a rigging failure resulted in the missiles being dropped off the Southern California coast. According to Naval Air Force spokesman Ezing Brian Blair, the U.S. Coast Guard has advised civilian mariners to steer clear of the area, and a search remains underway this week for the missing missiles, he said. There is a very low probability the missiles will detonate or explode as they were encapsulated for shipping and missing key components for activation, Blair said. We remain committed to leveraging all resources, including collaborating with local agencies to locate and recover these missiles. No one was injured and the helicopter sustained no damage in the mishap which the Navy Safety Command has classified as a Class A mishap, which involves property damage exceeding $2.5 million. Very expensive missiles. The incident remains under investigation. I wonder what really happened to all those missiles. Each of the quote-unquote fire-and-forget missiles used for ship defense, measures just more than 9 feet long. The RIM-116 rolling airframe missile ram is a lightweight, quick-reaction, fire-and-forget missile designed to destroy any ship cruise missiles and asymmetric air and surface threats. The RIM-116 ram was developed as a cooperative between U.S. and German governments and continues to be cooperatively produced and supported. And actually, they have sold them to places like Turkey, Japan, Egypt, etc. However, these missiles are now at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of California. God bless you and yours. Please share. Oh, guys, I tell you, there's one thing after another. Before I get into Dave Hodges, uh, I want to just talk about this uh, photo shows the moon and the five planets of the solar system lined up in the sky. Uh, I know you guys, I showed you on my channel about the planets lining up. And every time I try to go out my door to watch it in the evening or in the night or whatever, it's cloudy, so I didn't get to see any of it, really. Uh, so I hope you guys got to see some of it, you know. This summer, astro photographers and astronomers, astronomy enthusiasts are up for a real threat, a treat, treat. If you point your camera up to the sky before the sunrise, you'll find five planets of our solar system lined up. Add the moon to the equation, and there's an opportunity for some stunning, amazing things. So you can go to DIY. Uh, photography.net and see the rest of that uh, article but I didn't get to see them I wanted to see it so bad and I kept getting up and in, uh, in the morning dawn and uh, it's just cloudy and, and at night it's cloudy so uh, but I know that it's amazing events taking place uh, in the heavenlies as the Shua would say it's gonna happen in the end at the end a lot of things gonna be happening in the heavenlies we got black holes we got comics we got all kind of things going on up there. So uh, just be watching and praying. Uh, let's get over to Dave Hodges and see what he has to say and get into another few. I think I have another report. I don't know if I'm going to show it tonight, but I will post it in the description box. I got to play this one here about the biblical swarms. I will play that next. And then we will get into um, this one here, the rider on the pale horse cometh. I just saw that. So I'm going to try to play that. I really want to play. I haven't heard that myself. Uh, and then, then we'll get into, um, over to uh, this brother, I want you to guys to hear Ken Raggio report, the World News Report today, which is the most important 
uh, video I have on here today okay so I'm already at 29 minutes so I'm hoping I can cover uh, these really quickly okay so let me go ahead and do that before we get to uh, Raggio here so let me go on over here to Dave Hodges and another little videos here might get on to Susanna no on see what she's talking about too so let me go ahead and mute this out crazy what's going on in the airline industry and I have to fly this Thanksgiving and this Christmas and this doesn't bode well this really doesn't I'm really concerned and we're going to talk about Flightmare on the 4th of July and what the airlines are saying the cause is and then I'm going to tell you what the, they say behind the scenes is the real cause they're giving you reasons two three and four they're avoiding the number one reason because they want the government to bail them out as they fail. And they're failing. So they don't want to piss the government off. So we're going to tell you what's really going on with the airlines and why you can't depend on them. You can't count on the fact that, Aunt Bessie, I'll be home for your birthday. You don't know that. you got to hope you win the lottery and your plane gets all the way through. My name is Dave Hodges. I am the host of the Common Sense Show. We are the show that is freeing America, one enslaved mind at a time. Let me reach into my grab bag here and let me grab one of these. Oh, this is so cool. Uh, I become addicted to these. And yeah, we take uh, the keto with Hodges here to lose the weight. And this is the perfect supplement because, you know, sometimes you get to that 9, 10, 11 o'clock time and you go, oh, Gosh, I'm so hungry. My stomach is killing me. You start searching. There's no really good alternatives. There's cookies, potato chips, and ice cream. Well, if you have this, it tastes great. And this is completely organic. And it has items in it like turmeric and the omegas and zinc. And you're saying, wait, is this a health food? Yes, it is. In fact, if you go to go nuts with dave.com cute url go nuts with dave.com you're going to see an item list of what's in this and what the research says about the health benefits health benefits from a snack that can keep you from blowing your diet does it get any better keto with um is great but you still could have those uh, cravings this is flipping awesome 20 percent off they'll give you your money back if you're not satisfied i don't think that's going to happen and you're going to be a whole lot healthier. Check it out. Flight mare on the 4th. I can't get out of my mind the picture of William Shatner in the old Twilight Zone show where he's flying in a prop plane. This is the early 60s. And he's seeing gremlins on the wings and he just goes nuts. Well, I'm kind of worried about the same thing. They don't have enough flight attendants. They don't have enough pilots. They don't have enough air traffic controllers. Oops! I didn't see that plane coming. This is really scary. I feel like breaking into that song, Don't Go Out Tonight. It's bound to take your life. There's bad airlines on the rise because the air traffic controller shortage, that's scary. This is why they're canceling the flights. Now, there's another reason why they're canceling the flights. And then those are the top two. I'm going to give you the top two reasons. you got number two. What, what the government is saying and what the airlines are saying, oh, we can't fill our employee quotas. That's somewhat true. But the real reason is they can't afford to maintain the number of flights they have. Why? Because of Biden's energy policies. They're killing these people. They're trying to combine, okay, we're going to land in Cincinnati and pick up 30 passengers. We're going to fly to Minneapolis and pick up 25 more. And so they're trying to be efficient with their routes to save on fuel, and it ain't working. And when they can't do it, they cancel the flight if it's a big money loser. It's not, they're not just canceling the flights because they can't get the cruise. They're canceling the flights because they're L's. How do I know? Because pilots are telling me this, as well as flight attendants. But the, the airlines aren't going to say anything because they need a bailout where they go broke, and they're going broke, and they don't want to piss the government off. So they're being real nice smiling for Biden. Oh, it's just a labor issue. When we know damn good and well, that's not even close to the number one reason. The airlines are totally undependable now. Totally undependable. You can't count on the fact you're going to get to your destination. 
You say, well, who can you say that, Dave? They've already canceled. This isn't even a 4th of July. This is the 30th of June. And they've already canceled 830 flights. The lowest number of people are going to fly in this 4th of July than have flown in over a decade. Did I answer your question? This is scary. Again, Biden's energy policies at work. This is the reason. That's it for the Common Sense Show. Please share this far and wide. Thumb. This is Dabu7. There is an issue in Oregon where they are facing all these cannibalistic Mormon crickets. It's a pretty crazy issue here. This stretches throughout the Pacific Northwest of the United States in areas from Idaho up into Oregon. And the agriculture up there is estimating 10 million acres of rangeland in 18 counties back in 2021 were attacked by these things. And they're back. They're causing more problems. And if it gets back to the levels of where they were, it's going to cause devastation to what crops we've got left like the wheat and whatever else they're growing up there in that region. Now, they go on to say that some of the counties have come together and they've suggested spraying, an aerial spraying of pesticides to stop these things. Others have said, no, we do not want sprayed by those chemicals. So it's a back and forth type of situation. And then when you add in the fact that these things are cannibalistic, once you kill some on the road, these things will show up and start eating on the other ones. They say they will eat the others dead or alive if they're not getting enough protein. They say billions of these things already on the move. And this is just a little bit here of footage across the area, the different places of where they're seeing these things pop up. And of course, they're devastating farmlands out there, which is the last thing that we want to see. A look here at some of those giant creatures. So if the ODA finds more than three Mormon crickets or eight grasshoppers per square yard, it will recommend that there's a chemical treatment put into place. So if if you guys are, are dealing with this, you're not alone. If you've never heard of it, well, I'll leave more information here at a link you'll find in the description box, and I'll be covering this in greater detail on the next live stream. Make sure to join me going live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern on DLive. You'll find links below. Much love. Pleasant good afternoon to all of my brothers and sisters. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, who died for us and gave us life so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Please join me in the King James Version Bible, Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And I look and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. I'm so sorry about that, my brothers and sisters. This is happening very, very often. Once I start doing a video, the pictures comes out. Uh, so I apologize for that. Okay, so I have so many messages. Um, that I heard for the month of June from the Lord and I don't know where to start my brothers and sisters so I ask you to please listen to this video all the way and this is extremely this is an extremely important video I ask you to please share this video with family and friends and co-workers and let them know that we are almost at the end before our Lord Jesus Christ return okay so I, I don't know where to start my brothers and sisters all right so I'm gonna start with a message that the Lord gave to me and I have two prophetic dreams that he showed me the chaos and the confusion 
that is coming, my brothers and sisters. And like I told you, I really don't know where to start. So I'm going to start with this. Uh, from the month of June, so this is like all the dates that I tried to put together. I heard in the spirit, repent from your wicked ways, thus said the Lord. We must obey God. You do not have much time. Time is gone. Seek me now. War. War is at your doorstep. Prepare now. Prepare thou thyself. They will lose. They will lose the battle. Ukraine shall fall. Come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come to the living waters and drink. Your God, your Lord loves you. Okay, and then I heard in the spirit, persecution is coming. Coming martyrdoms, coming crucifixions, increased floodings, increased homelessness, disasters upon disasters, extreme weather patterns, scientists will no longer sing god judgment is upon the whole world people of the world listen you have disobeyed me you have not walked in my stature and obey my commandments the pale the rider on the pale horse is upon thee pestilence famine war and death is upon thee And I think, oh no, and then I heard my brothers and sisters, um, infectious, dis infectious deadly diseases commit, oh man, pestilence, child, they have developed schemes. So they have developed schemes to spread the pestilence, my brothers and sisters. I heard again in the spirit, the pale horse ride it, it's on its way, repent, turn away from sin. And then the Lord told me, my darling child, it will be worse than COVID time. And then I heard trouble, trouble, trouble. My brothers and sisters, get your life right now with right. Make sure that your life is right with Jesus Christ. Yeshua Hamashak. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's the only one who can give us life. No one can go to the Father except they go to Jesus Christ. Seek the Lord. Repent. Get baptized and seek the Lord. Turn away from your sin. Jesus is at the door. My brothers and sisters revelation chapter 6 verse 8 we are on the fourth now the horses of the eclipse is out all of the horses is riding right now things are going to get worse the lord told me it's going to get worse please seek the lord jesus christ repent and turn away from your sin may god bless you and your family share this video let them know the force the four horsemen ride it and very soon very soon my brothers and sisters things are going to get 10 times worse pray and turn away from all of the sins bye bye okay guys um uh, i'm glad she i'm glad i just the holy spirit just prompted this in my mind because i almost forgot about it i gotta show one more short video just a glimpse um my friend uh, Lewis in Florida, he's talking about Florida. Like you're talking about the locusts and the crickets or whatever. But he's talking about things going on in Florida. And uh, I'm just going to show you a very little bit of it. And then we'll right, get into the... Uh, Louis, today 25. is June 30th, 2022. And welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates. And, guys, we have some huge information coming out. If you can, please pray for us. We live in Florida. We live in the county. That this thing is popping up. We received uh, messages this morning that uh, the county is going to be spraying the air with chemicals and they're going to uh, announce quarantine in my county so i don't know if they're telling us that we have to stay home 
But uh, the reason why we receiving this message is because giant African snails sighting forces is popping up in Florida. And these are not just little ones. This thing are massive. There was a picture of a lady holding one of these giant snails and they look like small puppies. Let me see if uh, there's a picture here. Give me a second here, guys. Give me a second. Let me see if there's a picture really quick. Look at this. Look at this. I haven't seen it yet, but I do live in this county. Um, look at that. <laughs> Man, and this thing is dangerous. Dangerous. You can't even touch this thing. You can't touch it. And this is a, this is a big problem because these snails could literally take out crops, take out farmlands, take out strawberries, take out vegetables. It, it would take them out in like less than what, uh, less than a day. This thing is like famine stuff right here. It's like, uh, it's like grasshoppers and locusts. I mean, just looking at it, it's, it's huge. So... These things, uh, it seems like, I don't know, someone might have brought them to the States because they belong in Africa and stuff like that. But uh, it seems like someone might have brought it here. And uh, all of a sudden, it's popping up in Pasco County and Pinellas County. And also, I think it's happening in Hernando County. And I do live in Pasco County. And we received the message. They're going to be spraying the entire sky with chemicals all right guys before i start give this video a big thumb Welcome to another edition of Ken Raggio Live. I thank you for joining me today. This is a prophecy news break for Thursday night, June the 30th of the year 2022. And my subject tonight is Central Banks, the Mark of the Beast, and the Great Tribulation. I hope you will stay with me for the next little while as we discuss these things. You and I are genuinely standing on the verge of the Great Tribulation, and we need to get ready for it. I just recently ordered a copy of The Great Reset by Klaus Schwab and a copy of a commentary on that book by Glenn Beck. He says, uh, Joe Biden and the Rise of 21st Century Fascism and The Great Reset. Uh, these are two of the leading books. Of course, this was written in 2020 during the heart of the COVID pandemic. And there's been a lot of discussion in a lot of places about these developments. What is the Great Reset, and how does that affect Bible prophecies? You have to remember that this is a Bible prophecy program. It's not just about news and information. It's about readiness for all things godly and spiritual in the face of a coming great trial. And people who follow Bible prophecies long enough know and understand that we're living in the last days. And when I use that phrase, the last days, what do we mean by that? I'm talking about the approaching second appearance of Jesus Christ. When will Jesus come back? We've talked about this on hundreds of videos. I've got nine books in which we discuss all things spiritual, and we've just talked about this at great length. What is, what is this whole subject of Bible prophecy pertain to? It pertains to our understanding that we're living in the last days that are leading to all of these big major events. I've quoted so often from the book of Matthew where Jesus said, learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see all these uh, prophecies, speaking of the end time prophecies that you read throughout the 24th chapter of Matthew and other places, when you see these things begin to come to pass, uh, you know that this generation will not pass till all these things will be fulfilled. It's like when you see the budding of a fig tree, you know summer is nigh. <clears throat> and so when you see these prophecies, you know Jesus is about to come. 
and there's been a great deal of misinformation about when the Lord would come, and we've had a lot of us have been influenced over the years by what is called the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, or I should say the pre-tribulation rapture error, because Jesus clearly taught us in Matthew 24, 29, that his coming is going to be after the tribulation of those days, speaking of those 42 months that begin when the uh, abomination of desolation is committed in the third temple, and 42 months of great tribulation ensue. After that tribulation, Jesus said, then would appear the sign of the coming of the Son of Man in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth would mourn. Then they will see this. Uh, he sent forth his angels, and they shall gather up his uh, saints into his harvest. So the coming of the Lord is at the end of the great tribulation. Revelation 20, verses 4 and 5 tell us that John saw by the Spirit prophetically the souls of them that had been killed for the witness of Christ, who had received not the mark of the beast. They lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. And he talked about uh, the rest of the dead not being resurrected for another thousand years. He said, this is the first resurrection. John identified the first resurrection as including the tribulation saints. Now, if you understand that the tribulation saints, those who were martyred during the great tribulation, if they're in the first resurrection, then you have to comprehend that the first resurrection will not take place before the tribulation. And there's so many other verses. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the coming of the Lord and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in spirit or mind or body as, or by letter as, by, uh, work, as at the day of the Lord is at hand. For that day shall not come. He, and he's talking about the day of the Lord and our gathering together unto him. That's the rapture, first resurrection and rapture. He said, that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed. He clearly says, the Lord will not come and we will not be gathered together unto him until, the, until there's a great falling away and the man of sin is revealed. We have not seen the man of sin revealed. We are right now witnessing the spiritual apostasy, the falling away that he prophesied there. But we cannot and will not see the Lord come until the man of sin has been revealed. And once he's revealed... There'll be 42 months of hell on earth because the Bible said in the 12th chapter of Revelation, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has been cast down to the earth, and he's coming in great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. For 42 months, Satan is going to be wreaking havoc on this planet like the world has never known. Jesus called it great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And I'm trying to bring this to your attention so that you will be mindful of the fact that we are about to face the great tribulation and we are about to face the mark of the beast now i'm just one little prophecy preacher among a world full of prophecy preachers and we got big names on tv and radio and whatever and these guys have millions of copies of their books out and i have to say that a lot of what they teach is just simply wrong it does not agree with what the Bible teaches. And, and in fact, a lot of the prophecy preachers we hear nowadays, they're just news gatherers. They're news reporters, and they tell you what they see and hear. They do not interpret. They cannot interpret what the prophetic mean of them because they don't understand and know that meaning themselves. And so I don't consider it altogether that much of a priority that I give you a report on all the news updates every minute of the day, but that you understand that these, these macro events, these big events, Give us all the clues we need, friend. I mean, there's me, there's a jillion little clues out there that tells us the Lord is coming. But these big events alone are enough that if you've got a ready mind and an open mind, you should realize that Jesus is about to come. But we're, before that's going to happen, we're going to see the mark of the beast and we're going to see the great tribulation. And just for what's worth the chronology of all these things, uh, part of the understanding that comes from the ninth chapter of the book of Daniel where he tells us that the, there's going to be seven uh, years of prophetic events fulfilled right before uh, Jesus comes back. He said uh, in that 70 weeks of years prophecies that Daniel gave in verse 24, there's 69 of those prophetic weeks, and a prophetic week is seven years. So those first 69 prophetic weeks were fulfilled in ancient times between the Old and New Testaments. But the last week, the last seven years of prophes pro prophetic events, 
has to be fulfilled before our very eyes, before Jesus can come. If you can't identify those seven years, and if you can't identify the triggering or the, the beginning of those seven years or the middle of those seven years, and if you can't identify the events of those seven years, then it's impossible for you to comprehend how and when Jesus is going to come. You have to understand that Jesus is going to come when these events are done. And so I'm trying to teach you and preach these things to you consistently so you'll know. Now, the first event that starts that seven years is when that Pope of Rome, according to 927 of the book of Daniel, that, that uh, prince that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D. was the Roman prince, and that prince is the one that will uh, cause a seven-year a strengthen a covenant with many for seven years. That's what the prophecy said. He will confirm the covenant. That is to say, he will strengthen a covenant with many for seven years. And that's exactly what we've seen happen when the Vatican un unleashed or launched its uh, encyclical Laudato Si in May of last year, 2021. We saw that at the same in the same month that the nation of Israel turned 73. The Pope launched a seven-year action plan for a total of 80 years. And that, I think, is probably the generation Jesus was talking about when he said this generation will not pass. So you've got 73 years since the nation of Israel was reborn in modern times, beginning the last generation, and you have this Laudato Si seven-year action plan, which is a globalist world government, uh, total fascist control of the world, a, a, an oligarchy, being orchestrated by the Vatican itself. Revelation 13 tells us about that European beast, the seven-headed ten horns, and the second beast is that lamb that speaks like a dragon, and that's the pope of the Roman Catholic Church, and how that that Catholic Church is going to make an image to the beast, how that, the, as it were, the, the iron and clay feet of the Nebuchadnezzar's image in Daniel 2, that iron and clay feet, Prophecy has to do with that first and second beast. First beast is the iron. The second beast is the clay of Revelation 13. And all of that is in place. All of those players, have, they're not only in place, but they're doing exactly what they were prophesied to do. And now the, the Pope is strengthening a covenant with many for seven years. He's working with the United Nations, the United Nations and all of its pr principal actors, we're talking about Guterres, the Secretary General. We're talking about Prince Charles of Britain. We're talking about all the movers and shakers, Klaus Schwab, uh, George Soros, and all these others that are involved in the global economy, the global business trade. you got all your movers and shakers like Goldman Sachs and, and uh, BlackRock and Vanguard, all these big trillion-dollar uh, techno businesses they're they're running the world and they're working with the united nations and they're working with the vatican to take us over so my subject tonight is the central banks and the mark of the beast and the great tribulation so i really do believe we've already entered into the last seven years and i think that seven year action plan from the vatican is the strengthening of that globalist uh, totalitarian government that we're, we're seeing rise up even now. And you, you, you should remember that the last 42 months are really, I don't know any stronger way to say it than it's going to be hell on earth because uh, as I've already quoted Revelation 12, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Get that. When the Holy Ghost says to the church in the end time, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, that is a sober warning that every man woman boy and girl needs to pay attention to woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil's come down in great wrath and those 42 months jesus said that when you see that man of sin stand in the temple let them which be in judea flee to the mountains for then shall be great tribulation such was not since the beginning of the world this time no shall it ever be and he also said in luke 21 20 that at that time you're going to see Jerusalem compost with armies, and you will know that the desolation of Jerusalem is is nigh. So for for the middle of though for the middle of that last seven years, that last prophetic week, is when the man of sin stands up, commits the abomination of desolation in the temple, and at that same time, Jerusalem is encompassed with armies, and it's going to be left desolate for 42 months. Je Zechariah tells us that two thirds of Israel is going to die in the 13th chapter of Zechariah 7 and 8. 
and that one third are going to be tried in the fire like gold and silver is tried in the fire. So it's going to be great tribulation in Israel, but there's going to be great tribulation all over the world. And you and I are going to be a part of that. And another big part of that is that the mark of the beast is going to be introduced at that time. And that, that midpoint in that seven years is, is more than epic. It's, 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 it's a watershed point in time and eternity. Because at the same time the man of sin stands up in the middle of that week and triggers that last 42 months before Jesus comes at Armageddon, we're also going to see the two witnesses rise up to preach the gospel in the streets of Jerusalem. We're going to see 144,000 Jews flee to the mountains, uh, for then shall be great tribulation. And we're also going to see uh, the last trumpet, the, the sixth trumpet before the last trumpet during that period of time. We're going to see one-third of mankind die in a war that's precipitated on, along the Euphrates River, the four horsemen of, of the ninth chapter, sixth chapter of Revelation, the white horse, red horse, black horse, and green horse of prophecy. That's the Catholic Church, communism, capitalism, and Islam. All that's going to come to a head, and we're going to see one-third of the population of the world die. Great, 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 great tribulation. Now, folks, I don't know any other way to tell you the truth of this matter. There is no sugarcoating for this message. There is no way that I can soft pedal this message. I can't tell you everything is going to be fine because it's not going to be fine. It's going to be the biggest trial you've ever faced. I don't care what you've ever been. You may have had every kind of trial imaginable. You may have had a death in your family. You may have had sickness all your life. You may have had an automobile accident and, had, and suffered major injuries. You may have had a stroke or a heart attack. You might have been fired off your job. You may have had a bankruptcy or a divorce or any number of problems. But I'm telling you what Jesus said, you and I are going through great tribulation like we've never seen. It's going to be worse than a volcano. It's going to be worse than an earthquake or a hurricane or a tornado. It's going to be worse than anything the world's ever known. It's going to be worse than the, the Great Depression of 1929. It's going to be worse than the bubonic plague of 1918. The Great Tribulation is going to be hell on earth. Satan is going to be on earth. And you and I are going to feel the pressure immediately upon the introduction of that mark of the beast. Now, the mark of the beast, according to Revelation 13, is going to be put on everybody by mandate, by demand. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark upon his right hand or upon his forehead that no man might buy or sell, save he had the mark or the name or the number of his name. Folks, I'm telling you, you're not going to have anything you've got today unless you've Unless you're some kind of a hardcore prepper, you're somewhere off the grid and trying to hide out, that may give you a little bit of reprieve. But I can tell you this, over a 42-month period, I don't care even the best prepper is going to feel the crunch on this thing. And you're going to realize that many of the saints of God are going to die during that period of time. And when I use this introductory topic, I say the central banks are at the core of this because... If you pay attention whatsoever to the news nowadays, you know that the world economy is in big trouble. We've seen the stock market collapse. We've seen the cryptocurrency market collapse. We're watching the real estate market uh, almost on the verge of a bubble bursting with the uh, real estate market. Uh, we see that vehicles can hardly be bought because they can't be manufactured. We're seeing a shortage here and a shortage there. We're seeing food shortages, uh, car parts shortages. We're going to see diesel fuel shortages, gasoline prices through the roof, uh, mandates and vaccinations and every kind of imaginable headache and monstrous uh, oppressing events. Great tribulation, that's what it's called, great. The book of Mark calls it great affliction. You and I are fixing to go through great affliction. I think about Joshua, uh, Joseph rather, in Pharaoh's court whenever Pharaoh had, had that dream about the seven uh, fat cows being devoured by seven lean cows, and Joseph interpreted that as meaning that would be seven good years followed by seven years of drought and famine. And during those seven fat years, they were instructed to lay away for hard times and that's what saved Egypt and what really saved Israel at that time is Joseph's keenness uh, and his sensitivity to the Spirit of God to be able to interpret that dream but I'm telling you what the Bible says this 
great tribulation. I, I can just show you right there in the book of, of uh, Daniel 7 where he said that that man of sin is going to be given power to overcome the saints. He said this in, in Daniel 7 and 21, he said, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevail, prevailed against them. I'm a saint. I count myself a saint of God. I'm a believer. I'm a newborn believer. I'm born again. I have the blood of Jesus over my soul. I've been baptized with the water and of the spirit, and I've lived a godly life. I believe I'm one of the saints of God that this is talking about. He said, that man of sin is going to be given power. The same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. And verse 25 says, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high. Where out? Where are you out? And then I go to Revelation 13. You see the very kind, of, this very same kind of prophecy. In Revelation 13, 7, it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Yes, he's going to have power over the United States. He's going to have power over Texas. He's going to have power over the most conservative places on this earth. This, this man of sin, this wicked, evil beast government is going to control everything and everybody till Jesus comes. There is not going to be any reprieve until Jesus comes. No deliverance except by a mighty miracle. Now listen to me. i got things to tell you. The central banks are right now introducing at this very moment they're introducing central bank digital currencies we've got companies like xrp and xlm and xdc these currencies there's there's five currencies that have international standards organizations approval the iso 20022 uh, rules stipulate that s these cryptocurrencies have to operate by certain uh guidelines and there's only a limited number of these cryptocurrencies out in the market today that are fully compliant with that international standards organization uh, guidelines and that is XRP, XLM, XDC, IOTA and Algorand. Those five coins are the only ones that's going to really uh, be invincible during this coming period of time and we're going to see several of those coins involved in these uh, central bank digital coins and when I talk about the central bank digital coins if you don't know that means that we're going to be getting away from a paper currency and a metal currency and we're going to be getting into a digital currency you know in so many ways we're already digital because we do most of our transactions without cash but in that day cash will not be even uh, usable because it's all going to require that you have digital coins and you have a digital ID now one of those five ISO compliant coins is called XDC and there is a global ID system being built on that XDC coin. It's on the blockchain and in order for you to be able to function in that new cryptocurrency environment you will have to uh, log into the system with your uh, with your global ID, your blockchain digital ID and if you don't have that blockchain digital ID you will not have access to any money. And guys, the protocols are already designed. They're already operational. They're already on the scene. They're already being used. They're being tested on private networks already. Some of them are actually in use. Hundreds and hundreds of the biggest banks in the world right now are already using XRP to do their cross-border transactions. It's just a matter of time, guys, before we're going to lose our cash and we're going to see Central Bank Digital Currencies, CBDCs. I've talked about this so many times, I'm almost tired of talking about it. And still people don't know and understand or believe. And that's what the most grievous thing is. People think that I'm somehow foolish for believing the church is going through the tribulation. They won't hear a word I say. But you can mark it down, just write it down somewhere, anywhere, I don't care. You're going through the great tribulation whether you like it or not unless you die between now and then. Because that's what the Bible says. And that CBDC linked with that global ID is going to be the mark of the beast. 
and we've got all kind of technologies out there. We've got all kind of chips and protocols. It doesn't even matter which protocol they choose. Just the fact remains, we're on the verge of a global ID and a CBDC. And if you hold Bitcoin or Ethereum or XRP or any of these other coins, there's thousands of coins out there. You may hold, some of those coins are going to die the death. Some of them are going to just disappear off the map. And others, others that you didn't think were so important are going to end up ruling the world. And, uh, you know, the, the irony of this is the biggest part of the people of the world are just going to jump on board with this. And that's what Christians are going to have to contend with. I, I, it's, going to be, it's going to be the worst nightmare that professing Christians have ever had when they realize they've bamboozled themselves. They have lied to themselves for so long that they now cannot act. They've told themselves for so long, I'm not going through the tribulation. Jesus is going to take me. I'm not going to have to even contend with the mark of the beast because it's going to come after I go up in the rapture. I, I'm as sure as I live, there's going to be Christian, professing Christians all over the planet that are going to take the mark of the beast because their preachers said it's okay. Preachers say it's, you can be forgiven. It's not wrong, or maybe that's not the mark, and every kind of argument known to man. The same kind of arguments they use to argue against... Uh, to, 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 to tell you you go ahead and take the vaccine. If you want to be saved, first of all, you've got to be spiritually ready to meet God. You've got to obey the gospel plan. But if you want to survive, if you want to get by in the great tribulation, you better get your act together this very minute. You better get your house in order. You better start getting yourself out of debt. You better start putting up some stuff. You better start getting your house ready. Talk to your spouse. Talk to your children. You need to get yourself in church. You need to get your life in order and get right with God. You need to be in church every Sunday, living, living for God, worshiping God, reading your Bible, praying, paying your tithes, living a godly life, dressing and acting holy and doing what God wants you to do with your life. You and I are fixing to face great tribulation. And I don't know what to tell you. Wow, guys. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm, I'm praying for him, though, about Sabbath. I really, so many people out there in Sunday churches, they need to know where it comes from. You know, Romanism and Catholicism and Constantine and Yeshua never changed it. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that's the only part I don't agree with, with uh, Raggio right now, but I'm praying for him. So, you know, we pray for each other, and but the stuff he's talking here, I really believe it. Uh, we are going to go through a tribulation, because that's what the Bible says. So it's time for us to get ready, get ready, get ready. And I'm going over here to a mission report real quick, because this video is roaming through quite quickly. Uh, my husband going to join me to do Psalms 26. Uh, and then we're going to uh, come back and do, uh, really, Isaiah 36. I want to get into that, but we're going to do that one another time. But let's go into, uh, uh, we're going to go on over here to a short mission report and then get into the Bible. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, mute out again. I am not
ये सम और कोई रहा है रहा है और कोई रहा है क्या Uh, praise the Lord for missionaries. This is in Pakistan, people. Uh, as you know, we show many uh, missionaries from Africa all over the world. Uh, so let's get over into the Bible. We really appreciate your support of the missionaries. Um, and so we're going to get into Psalms. So not, not too long of a chapter, but a very powerful chapter uh, in Psalms 26. And I'm going to let my husband read it and take over. But... Uh, we guys, we know it's a lot of material on here today. I hope you share this video. Uh, yeah, I believe we are going to go to some great tribulations coming soon. Where they throw throwing all the crickets and uh, you see the pestilences are spreading out already. Uh, crickets and locusts and they got these snails now in Florida. I was talking to a friend who lived in Florida last night and she was telling me these snails been around for a while. But now they're going to be coming out more, you know, from what Lewis is saying. Uh, so, we you know, we're going to have all kind of pestilences. In Colorado, they got all these wolves, wolves coming out all over the place. Uh, mountain lions are coming down to the cities, and we're going to have all kind of pestilences. But we need to be understanding to put the covering over us. You sure say he will protect us. If you pray, pray, pray for protection, he will protect you. And I believe that because I've been praying these prayers for many years. So, uh... Father, be with us as we go to Psalm 26. Uh, we thank you so much for your love for us, your care for us. Uh, and it's a hot day, but we love you. We thank you for the Sabbath coming in. Uh, so we thank you so much for everything you're doing for us, Father. Let your Holy Spirit come be with us now. We ask in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Haya. So you can go ahead and read Psalm 26, a wonderful psalm, uh, telling us to examine ourselves. And, you know, just a really wonderful psalm. Go ahead. <clears throat> Judge me, Yahuwah, for I have walked with integrity. I have trusted in Yahuwah without wavering. Examine me, Yahuwah, and test me. Test the purity of my mind and my heart. For your covenant faithfulness is before my eyes, and I walk about in your faithfulness. I do not associate with deceitful people, nor do I mingle with dishonest people. I hate the assembly of evildoers, and I do not live with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence, and I go around your altar, Yahuwah. 
to sing a loud song of praise and report all your wonderful deeds. Yahuwah, I love the temple where you live, the place where your glory lives. Mm -hmm. Do not sweep me away with sinners or my life with people who are bloodthirsty, mm -hmm. in whose hands there is a plot and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in integrity. Redeem me and have mercy on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the assemblies will I bless Yahuwah. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. So many bloodthirsty people around. So much death around every day. Death on every corner. And so you have to ask the Father to cover you with his blood. And he will do it, people. We need to trust in him. Believe in him. As the song said today, he's my everything. He should be your everything. I mean, everything from your body. I don't care what it is. He should be your everything. Absolutely. Because doctors and lawyers and all these things we're so used to believing in, dentists, you know, whatever, we need to know he is our God. He is our Savior. He is our uh, our Elohim, and he is our physician, our great physician. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out this video. Uh, we're going to go on over here. Uh, I was just looking at this one here today. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I hope you heard what uh, Roger Yo talked about. The money is going away. Uh, the, all the tension in the world right now. But we should be following Yeshua Messiah Haya. So, uh, and always forget, don't forget the homeless. Uh, so, you know, we was uh, always talking with the homeless all the time through the week. So, we thank you for your offerings coming in. And so I'm going to go ahead now and get on over to um, Mer Mer uh, Mer Maranatha and end the video. So let me go here and find Maranatha. We're going to go to the uh, Shaping Up in God's Workshop, okay? Uh, so we need to be working while we can work, while it is day, working for the Father, working for the kingdom, storing up, storing up our uh, souls in heaven. Because, you know, he said to store up your treasures in heaven, not on earth with thieves break in and moth does corrupt you know that's why we need to get away from this world come out of the world we're in the world but not of the world so let me go ahead and play that real quick right now march 13 shaping up in god's workshop do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit within you which you have from God, you are not your own, you were bought with a price, so glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, Revised Standard Version. We are not our own, we have been purchased with a dear price, even the sufferings and death of the Son of God. If we could understand this and fully realize it, we would feel a great responsibility resting upon us to keep ourselves in the very best condition of health that we might render to God perfect service. We believe without a doubt that Christ is soon coming. We have no doubt, neither have we had a doubt for years, that the doctrines we hold today are present truth and that we are nearing the judgment. We are preparing to meet him who, escorted by a retinue of holy angels, is to appear in the clouds of heaven to give the faithful and the just the finishing touch of immortality. When he comes, he is not to cleanse us of our sins, to remove from us the defects in our characters, or to cure us of the infirmities of our tempers and dispositions. If wrought for us at all, this work will all be accomplished before that time. When the Lord comes, those who are holy will be holy still. Those who have preserved their bodies and spirits in holiness in sanctification and honor will then receive the finishing touch of immortality. But those who are unjust, unsanctified, and filthy will remain so forever. No work will then be done for them to remove their defects and give them holy characters. This is all to be done in these hours of probation. It is now that this work is to be accomplished for us. We are now in God's workshop. Many of us are rough stones from the quarry, but as we lay hold upon the truth of God, its influence affects us. It elevates us and removes from us every imperfection and sin of whatever nature. Thus we are prepared to see the King in his beauty and finally to unite with the pure and heavenly angels in the kingdom of glory. It is here that this work is to be accomplished for us, here that our bodies and spirits are to be fitted for immortality.
Okay, guys, uh, I thank you guys for watching today. I'm going to go ahead and go on over to a closing here. Uh, we want to thank you guys for all the offers been coming in this week, especially uh, the beginning of July 1st and yesterday. We appreciate each and every one of your offerings, your prayers, uh, and all the things you're doing for Feed My Sheep and Fill My Cup today. I mean, Feed, feed My Sheep today and Fill My Cup Ministries and all the other uh, ministries that support us and help us. We thank you for all your offerings to help the homeless, the orphans, the widows, and those in need in the mission right. fields. May Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you out there. Uh, donation options, cash app, uh, business card, uh, https colon slash slash geniemarner.thebumpcard.me. Uh, also, other donation options are at our website, fmcmi.org. If you haven't visited our website, please do so for a lot of material about ourselves and our other writings and poetry and testimonies and all of that stuff and our books and uh, things that we uh, put on there uh, and our Bible, the Bible my husband has for you uploading that. Uh, Marner.com at gmail.com. You can also give that PayPal. Uh, also, mail in your donations at Fill My Cup Ministries. Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. Uh, either ship in anything to us in a box, a package, whatever. You have to use this address. Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. So we really appreciate you watching. I'm going to go and let my husband close out with prayer as time is going. Uh, so we're just going to use that because I hope you guys understand Shabbat's about to come. Uh, so I hope you guys have a happy Sabbath and uh, and all of those things uh, this weekend. Enjoying the weekend. Uh, you know, a lot of things are going on this weekend. So uh, we ask them that you be safe wherever you go or whatever you do. I thought I had another picture up. Maybe I don't. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray then uh, and just let you guys go. I thought I had another picture there. Uh, Fourth of July, uh, the flag with the American on it. I don't know what happened to it. So anyway, but you guys enjoy your weekend. Uh, you probably won't see me tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take a Sabbath off and do some real worship because we need to do some real worship. We haven't been able to do that for a while. So uh, we're going to do some real worship and study tomorrow. And then uh, Sunday, maybe having to go on the road a little bit. So pray for us as we go visit a family member. And then uh, families might be coming by here Monday. But we ask that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and Sabbath. So I'm going to let you go ahead and pray and close out. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everyone who gets to view the video today, Father. We just thank you for watching over us and, and guiding mm -hmm. us through this uh, time of the end, Father. Yeah. We know it's uh, it's like walking through a minefield. There's so <laughs> many ways to trip ourselves up, but we just uh, trust you to show us the way. Light up our path, Father. Yes. And we look forward to seeing you. Look forward to meeting you face to face Hallelujah. soon in yeah. Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I go and I'm going to just go say Shabbat Shalom and early. <laughs> And you guys have a wonderful, wonderful weekend in Shabbat Shalom. And praise God and give him the glory because we're going to have to put our trust totally in him. He's our everything. Remember, he is going to be our everything in every situation. So please understand that. So he said he will be with us until the end of the age. So I love you so much. I thank you for watching. Shabbat Shalom early. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>